Howdy there folks, this is Lapidary Dave, and in this video I'm going to be showing you folks how to make cabochons using a rotary tool, flex shaft, dremel, drill press, or hand drill. Also, if you are already making cabochons with like a lapidary grinder, this video might help you to make perfectly round cabs. I've been wanting to make this video for a while after watching a few videos from a gentleman named Daniel Lopaki, I believe his last name is, whose channel is Lopaki Stone and Metal. In his video, he uses a tool that rotates freely to make really nice, perfectly round beads. And while I didn't have the tools to make that same video, and he made it so nicely, there's no point in making another. I did get inspired to make this video, which is making cabs that are perfectly round by using a rotary tool flex shaft or hand drill. And while thinking it over, I thought that I could do it a slightly different way without having to use a lapidary grinder. While preparing for this video, I was suggested a video from a gentleman named Ares, I believe his name is. His channel is Ares Shahumayan. Excuse me for not being able to pronounce that right. But he has essentially made the same video that I'm sharing with you folks today. Just a little bit more streamlined. And he doesn't show the sawing and the free-forming of the rough stone. So I figured... I would make this video even though his video is much nicer. You should definitely watch it and subscribe to both Ara's and Daniel's channels. They're very awesome artists. Anyway, I start making the cab by slicing a slab as square as I can. You should mark out the slab to be as square as possible and then perhaps even draw lines from corner to corner to mark the middle and then draw a circle around it. And after you slice the stone, you could even work all the corners of the square to get it as round as possible, which will definitely save you some work down the line. The next thing I do is I get ready to glue it to a nail. Perhaps you could use other dopping sticks or stuff. I use a nail because it's really easy. They're relatively straight and fit into my flex shaft pretty easily. I clean up the nail a little bit by running it across the stone wheel, but you could use sandpaper or whatever, or you could just glue the stone directly to the nail. I clean it up a little bit because I feel like perhaps it might make the stone stick to the nail a little bit better with the glue since the top of cheaper nails are kind of irregular. So after cleaning up the nail, the next thing I do is clean the stone and get ready to glue. I'm using some very cheap, like Dollar Tree gel glue. You can use non-gel glue, but the gel glue is a little bit thicker and makes a little bit less of a mess for me. I then try to put the nail as close to the center of the stone as possible. If you marked your nail, you should have better results than I have here in this video. Then I set it out for somewhere to dry. I do use a little bit more glue than necessary just to make sure that everything sticks. All right, folks, so now I'm going to put this nail into this flex shaft and tighten it up. I don't want it all the way down, but a good amount of the ways down there. Sometimes these nails are actually not as straight as you might think. <laughs> And there we go. The same thing can be done using a drill. This one's a little overkill and it has a cord, but if you have like a battery powered one, that would be a lot better. The smaller probably the better. I prefer to do this with anything that has a chuck. However, um, I hear that like Dremel and other rotary tool brands sell different sized collets that could fit a nail. 
I know both my Dremel and my um, HyperTough Rotary tool do not have the right kind of collets to fit a nail, but it can be done. Yep, Harbor Freight flex shaft. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hold this diamond flat lap up against here, and much like lathing, I'm only going to nip the outside. If I go full monkey, it could fly off, I could damage the stone or damage the tool. So I'm going to let it spin and slowly go against this diamond flat lap wheel. You don't need a diamond flat lap wheel. You can easily use um, like diamond sharpening blocks. They sell them really cheap. Uh, I've seen some online that were like three for $11, different grits, and you can use different grits. You can use something like this. I use this tool for truing up my silicon carbide hard wheels. You just hold it up against there. Or you could use uh, really rough silicon carbide sandpaper. It'll take a lot longer, so I highly suggest buying yourself some kind of cheap diamond plate. They sell really rough ones um, for next to nothing online. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm going to establish the sides, like the girdle. And this will let me know roughly how big the piece is gonna be when I'm finished. But I'm gonna go slowly. I'm using a two and a half gallon drinking water container for the to get this thing wet. So I'm just gonna like drip it on there like this. Ooh, not too much, but not too little. And I'm gonna go slow. All right, so as you may be able to see here, it's definitely starting to round up. It's gonna be, when it's perfectly round, it's gonna be as big as the deepest spot of your piece. So I'm gonna have to work all of this material to get down to there. Which is why, you know, probably measuring out the slab that you make square um, is pretty important. You want it as square as possible so when you knock off those corners you can get as round as possible. It's important to get the nail as close to the center as you can. So when it's a square you can even like draw lines from every corner and that is a really good rough middle. But I got a little bit of hogging to do. It doesn't take too long but it's noisy. <laughs> Alright I'm gonna get to this. All right, folks, and that's it. It's perfectly circular. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna start taking down the top corner and we're gonna slowly start cabbing. Sometimes I go from the bottom and roll it up. After I got a decent dome, then I can apply a little bit of pressure. Not too much. I don't wanna damage this super cheap uh, flex shaft or if I was using a Dremel or my drill press or whatnot. You know, if you're using like a drill or something and you have it clamped, then you can move the piece that you are using to rough out the stone instead of moving the tool. All right, folks. So, uh, yeah, as you can see, the outsides of the piece are pretty symmetrical. The top still has a little bit of a lean to it. So I'm gonna start working the face, kind of rolling into it. All right, folks, that took no time at all. You kind of want to make sure that you get a very nice dome on the top because it's gonna be a lot harder for the sandpaper to remove um, anything visible than it is for these hard diamond things or whatever you decide to hog out with. Shoot, if it's a soft stone, you could probably do this against a sidewalk. You didn't hear from me though. Now we're gonna switch over to some silicon carbide sandpaper. 
To get the best results, I would probably suggest starting with something close to like 100, 180 when you're jumping straight from hard diamond. And then you're going to want to get to the finest sandpaper you have. Sometimes I see stuff at the hardware store that goes up to, you know, 2,500. So this feels like 600 or 1,000 maybe. I'm not exactly sure. But trust me, for the best results, you're going to want to go to the finest um, sandpaper you have. So I'm using this PSA stuff instead of loose leaf sandpaper. You can easily buy like a foam sanding block to sand the piece. You're gonna want something that has a little bit of give to it, much like a soft back lapidary diamond wheel to get the best cab possible. If you use something hard to sand against, or that's not very spongy, much like what I'm about to do, I don't know if you'll be able to see it on camera, you'll almost get a point to the top of your cab. It's not bad, it polishes up pretty nicely, but if it's perfectly rounded, the light will actually hit it better and it'll gl uh, glow a little bit more. This has like a little bit of a tip there, kind of where it goes up from using this and not something spongy. It's really easy to make something. You could probably literally wrap the sandpaper in a sponge. I already have these that I've kind of already sacrificed to the rotary tool cab gods. Just like the hard diamond, I'm gonna drip some water on there. It's a little less important to start on the girdle than it was when you're doing the hard diamond stuff because we already have our shape. It's looking great. Already has a very slight gloss. I wanted to do something hard to show you uh, the long way around making these caps. On the rough wheel, I forgot to mention that I polished, well not polished, I held the tool up against the abrasive on the hard thing to kind of take off that hard sharp edge. Uh, doesn't really matter depending on the type of jewelry you're going to be setting it on or whatever you're going to be doing with the cab, but it's something I do and I do it throughout the um, finer abrasives. So you might be seeing me move the piece around a lot more than I did using the hard wheel. That's because silicon carbide, unlike diamond, breaks down into finer grits when it's worked. So I want to move this around to get as much of the roughest grit on the silicon carbide that I can. If I hold in one spot, it can kind of burn out. Silicon carbide, I can even feel it. The places I didn't work are a lot rougher than the places I did. Now I'm gonna jump to this finer Kind of feels like 600. I'm not exactly sure, but it's finer for sure. You can already see how glossy it's gotten. This is dry, unwet. I already worked the bottom of it just a little bit. Oh yeah, pretty shiny already at what might be 600 grit. So to polish, I'm going to just rub some compound onto a cloth and let it spin. Uh, I'm sure folks can find a way to hurt themselves by doing this, so be careful. I've used a t-shirt in the past when I was testing this technique out. I'm going to kind of rub it up on there like a crayon. I'm using Zam. Zam is a chrome oxide, I think. I'm not 100% sure. Online folks call it Green Rouge, but uh, I would prefer Fabuluster, especially for this piece of chrysoprase. I don't have any on hand, so I'm gonna use this and it's gonna be totally fine. So I have it on there. I'm just gonna hold it up against it. Stuff can get locked in there and it can get ripped away, so don't like use a shoulder t-shirt thing or anything. This is probably a bad idea to begin with. I'm sure there's a much better way to do this. All right. Now it's got a bit of a shine. It's not 100% perfect. I should have taken this hard material to at least 1200, but you get the idea. Nice little shine going on. So what's next? We take it off the nail. Take it off the chuck first, and then we take it off the nail. 
So I have been using super glue and have been removing cabs from super glue with from super glue dop sticks for a couple months now. And I've been putting them inside of acetone. When I have things that are dopped that are wood, the acetone seems to get behind the stone very easy and kind of breaks free after I leave it in the acetone for like 20 or 30 minutes. It doesn't seem to do the same thing with a nail for me. So I leave it in the acetone and then I take like a razor blade or a knife and I get it off that way as I will show you here in a few. I got this little container of acetone, Equate brand, super cheap. I got it because of the container. Actually, it looks like I don't have enough in there. Have to keep it on its side or something. This will definitely help to get it off of the dop stick. But uh, you get the idea. I just put it in there, a container. Leave it for like 20 or 30 minutes, if not more. We'll check it out here in a bit. All right, so we removed the stone from the acetone. It took me more than a day. I've been helping some other YouTubers with their videos, making GoFundMe videos for people, and working on a music video for a friend, so it took me a while to get back to finishing it up. But the acetone actually made it look a lot darker. Weird. Um, do not leave the stone in the acetone too long. Certain stones, such as turquoise, that have backing formula can actually get damaged from the acetone. I've learned this from experience. I'm not too sure what other stones can be affected by acetone, but try to get it out as soon as you know the acetone is broken up. It is still stiff. I imagine the acetone did not get behind the uh, chrysoprase very easily, but I can feel the outside acid, the outside glue is pretty gummy. So I'm gonna use this X-Acto knife and try not to uh, cut off my fingers or break the stone. And she's free. Some stuff there, I can like grind it off with some sandpaper. I've been using this wheel to like sand stuff. And there we have it. A cabbage on. Cabbage John. Not perfect. I should have taken it to other grits. I should have used more grits like 180, maybe 320, 400, 600, 800, 1200, 2500, but good enough for me. It's definitely pretty, and it works. I hope this video helped you folks who do not have big fancy lapidary machines, but are definitely eager to start making cabs. This is a great way to make cabs that are calibrated for prefabricated jewelry. It's real easy to just grind a little bit more and the silicon carbide takes off so little that if you have a piece that will fit into a prefab piece of jewelry, just by sanding it, you're not going to remove enough material to make it too small for a piece. So you can go online and buy like some earring cups or some pendant cups that are round and easily make cabs like this to fit them to make jewelry. I made small pieces. You can totally make a larger piece this way. Just be careful not to ruin your rotary tool, drill press, hand drill, flex shaft, whatever you're using. Yeah, but I imagine you can make some very big pieces this way. When it comes to the back, unfortunately, yeah, without dopping it again and spinning it, it's not going to work out. I had fun. <laughs> I love this little piece. In many ways, this works faster than using large lapidary machines, especially on the hard stuff. Anyway, folks, I'm Lapidary Dave. I hope you enjoyed. Please share, like, love, subscribe, all that good stuff. It really helps out the channel. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. I'm always happy to answer anything that I can. And if I don't know something, I'll ask somebody who does. Until next time, my friends. Peace.